The Russia vs NATO war is near. The situation on the border between Ukraine and Russia is deteriorating overnight and EU. NATO and US member states are trying to prepare for a possible military and economic response to Russia if it attacks Ukraine. In fact, the fears that this is increasingly possible are visible. The American president said that the USA could send more soldiers to Romania and Poland. And the French president announced that his country is also ready to supplement the military forces on the eastern flank and to send soldiers to Romania. Meanwhile, Vladimir Putin is demanding clear concessions from the West not to take action. Until he gets what he wants, the leader of Moscow ordered the addition of troops from the border with Ukraine. Following the failure of last week's negotiations in Geneva and Brussels, tensions are rising. And European leaders and President Joe Biden are increasingly convinced of Vladimir Putin's aggressive intentions. Joe Biden said Vladimir Putin would order troops to enter Ukraine because they have to make a move. The Ukrainian intelligence services are already talking about 127,000 soldiers present at the border between the two states, increasing in the last days. In addition, Moscow brings fighting equipment by train, from the far west and from Siberia. I say 52% minus 48% in favor of diplomacy. We are not just a crisis of Russia's relations with Ukraine, but a crisis of Russia's relations with the West. And the big stake in this battle is not just Ukraine, but Europe and the security order in Europe. That is, what kind of rules we will have in terms of security from now on. There are those who are 30 years old and who have been accepted by the Russians or new rules are accepted. This is where we are. They knocked on the door twice. Now they are trying to tear down our house and here I am referring to Poland, Romania, Slovakia, the Baltic countries, Finland, Sweden. Vladimir Putin prepared his strategy extremely well before mobilizing troops in eastern Ukraine. The former presidential advisor on security issues believes that tensions have built up over time and that Vladimir Putin has prepared his steps very well before mobilizing troops in eastern Ukraine. Europe must prepare for a difficult period in terms of relations with Russia. And the war is not ruled out, the holiday is over for everyone. We have to accept the idea. If even now, after all this cascade of crises that fall on our heads, from the geopolitical, to the pandemic, the environmental. The technological challenges we do not realize that the holiday is over and we begin a process of adaptation to the future, then don't look up. The message of the film is clear. Look ahead to the troubles, because they are coming from the future. And the role of the scientist is essential to combat the existential problem. And when it comes to Russia, there is an existential stake. Not necessarily for our survival as a people, but for democracy, which, even if it is not perfect, remains the best form of organization for the future. Moscow wants more than a new piece of the territory of the neighboring country. Vladimir Putin will not act on impulse because he wants to get, in fact, much more than a new piece of the territory of the neighboring country. The Moscow leader will only take action when he is assured of victory on all fronts, military and diplomatic. Especially since Russia suffered a heavy defeat in the 1980s when it became involved in the conflict in Afghanistan. Russia is a rational actor. It has plans and it often has better plans than the West. In recent years, the Russians have seemed very cautious. They did not use excessive military force anywhere. And in Crimea, in Donbas, in Syria, this costs, causes external damage, and they have the trauma of defeat in Afghanistan, which also led to the collapse of the former Bolshevik Empire. The way Afghanistan sucked their resources and led to a subsequent political and strategic defeat mattered enormously in the economy of the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. The Russians believe they have learned their lessons better than the West, the fact that Russia has gathered Western chancelleries at the table is again a milestone victory for Vladimir Putin. The stake for Russia is not only an invasion of eastern Ukraine, but a much more important one, which would allow the Moscow leader to tickle the pride and pride of the Russian people. But also his own, the disappearance of democracy. What Russia can change is the rules of the game. 
one of the rules so far that is extremely important and must be maintained, even at the cost of military intervention, is that of the sovereignty of the peoples, of their right to decide their own fate. The issue is how Russia wants to impose rules to the detriment of other countries. It's not just about Ukraine. True. I do not expect Russia to attack a country other than Ukraine at this time. But the rule is that only those who are voted by the Russians join NATO. Who determines this? One country can only decide the fate of another country in an arbitrary manner. In addition, there is no danger for Russia that we have NATO on European territory. We see that the Russian military pressure on Ukraine has increased. Yes, Russia has the right to move all these troops on its territory as it wishes. But we also have a right to be worried and concerned because in the past we have seen Russian troops exercise and then cross the border and invade Georgia and wage war there. Then, in 2014, the same scenario, troops, exercises and those troops crossed the border into Ukraine and left some of the equipment there. Going through this once, we are now very careful. The Russians are very good at playing us out of uncertainty. In recent years they have moved in and given us new jobs. They came up with something and we stayed the nights and we thought what are the intentions, what do they want to do? High level negotiations continue between Russia and the West. With diplomacy being the most sought after way to avoid armed conflict. European and American leaders are threatening Russia with very harsh economic sanctions if it orders its troops to cross the border. Some much harsher than those imposed after the 2014 Crimean invasion. The worst case scenario in international relations is war. The worst case scenario in international relations is war. Because war has the greatest destructive force. No other phenomenon has such a destructive force. A war can lead to the disappearance of a country on the map. See the case of Poland throughout history. A war can tear apart a piece of land, as was the case with Bessarabia or as happened in Ukraine in 2014. This is where all these efforts are going at the moment. They both have weapons, and if the military conflict were limited to Russia and Ukraine, it would still be a tragedy. I am absolutely convinced that the Ukrainians will respond with much more vigor, much more strength than in 2014. This is also known by the Russians. We must continue to look for ways to ease the military situation. The United States, the European Union and Kiev have accused Russia of deploying nearly 127,000 troops to its border with Ukraine for a potential invasion of the neighboring country. However, Moscow denies that it has such an intention and assures that it only wants to defend itself against NATO's threatening position near Russia's borders. The difference is that the Ukrainian army has been militarily equipped in recent years, and a number of new appointments and replacements of many generals, including the seven who betrayed in 2014, have taken place in the army leadership. In my opinion, Ukraine will defend itself very strongly, it will give a very strong military reaction to the Russian attack, if there is such an attack. Now I am not saying that Ukraine is necessarily ready to win this war, in the end there is still a fairly large discrepancy in military capability, but in any case, the answer will be far beyond the expectations of many, and the losses that the Russian army will incur in Ukraine will be very high. Russia has done so because it does not want to see Ukraine in NATO under any circumstances. After 2014, talks on Ukraine's accession to the North Atlantic Alliance were resumed by current President Volodymyr Zelensky, and Russia knows that if it invades Ukraine, it will also stop its entry into the alliance. No one can receive in NATO a state occupied by foreign troops on its territory, because once it has received a state in NATO, According to Article 5 of Collective Defense, allies must automatically intervene to defend the territory of the Allied state. So receiving Ukraine would be tantamount to the West entering the war with Russia. Realistically, no one wants a war, and for this practical reason, an invaded Ukraine becomes ineligible for NATO membership. So it is clear that Ukraine will be blocked. What other tools does the West have to stop a war? President Putin is well aware of one thing, that the United States, NATO, the West will not go to war for Ukraine.
The situation is such that in the American society so ideologically divided, weakened by the cultural wars and in no case is the issue of entering the war for Ukraine. And President Biden has said that it is by no means an option for us. But we are considering a very tough package of sanctions. So the safe instrument that the West has at the moment is this sanctions that are supposed to be of an extraordinary level of severity. One of the harshest restrictions would be to disengage Russia from the swift system of financial banking transactions, when virtually no more credit cards could be made and used on Russian territory. Another unprecedented sanction would directly target President Vladimir Putin. I heard for the first time this week about President Putin's blockade, that is, the introduction of sanctions against President Putin himself, that he will no longer be able to move or go to foreign properties. Russia has been extraordinarily aggressive and said that if there are sanctions against the President of Russia, it is tantamount to severing diplomatic relations between Russia and the United States. Ukraine is considered to be part of the Brusky Mir of the Russian world, because that is where Russian culture and civilization come from. In addition, Russia wants its sphere of influence in Eastern Europe to be recognized. The Americans have made it very clear, both NATO and the EU, that the West cannot recognize Russia's right of sphere of influence against the will of the sovereign states of Eastern Europe and their legitimate national aspirations to conclude those alliances. They want example to the West. Here is the conflict. It is clear that Ukraine is a kind of entrance or exit gate, an interface of the Russian world with Europe and the West. President Joe Biden predicts that Russia's next move will be to attack Ukraine, even if Russian President Vladimir Putin has not yet decided. On the other hand, Biden deplores the lack of synchronization of NATO member countries on the alliance's response to a minor incursion into Ukraine. I am not so sure what to do. My guess is he'll do it. He has to do something, Biden said of Russian President Vladimir Putin's intentions at a three-year press conference on January 19th. He anticipated that Russia would attack Ukraine and acknowledged that there was still no unitary view among NATO member countries on how the North Atlantic Alliance should respond to a possible, minor, incursion by Russia into Ukraine. Biden believes that Putin is in fact testing NATO and says that the response to Russia's actions depends both on the extent of these actions and on the West's ability to overcome differences. On the other hand, speaking of these asynchronizations within NATO, Biden launched a dangerous distinction between a significant invasion and a minor incursion, causing shivers in Kiev, where the head of US diplomacy Antony Blinken is. Biden has sincerely acknowledged what he is facing in order to create significant consequences and discouragements for Moscow, which remains closely linked economically to the United States' main European partners. While Biden is threatening Russia with severe economic consequences if Putin sends troops across the border to the point of restricting financial transitions in US dollars, Western nations, he says, have not fully agreed on what should be done to do so in the event of a minor incursion by Russia into Ukraine. It is very important that we keep all NATO members on the same side. I spend a lot of time on it and there are differences. He said, there are differences in NATO about what countries are willing to do, depending on what happens, Biden said. I noticed in Kiev, where officials met with the head of US diplomacy. Antony Blinken, during which time Russian troops were still gathering on the border with Ukraine. Biden's assessment of the U.S. president's dissensions within NATO. Even though U.S. and Western officials are constantly trying to project a message of unity in the midst of the crisis, has simply horrified Ukrainian officials.